How's it going you guys, AZ Playo 21 back again with another pay-per-view in our UFC save and today it is UFC 278 De La Rosa versus Shevchenko 2. This is a rematch from a earlier pay-per-view, I think it was only two pay-per-views ago, no it was five pay-per-views ago, UFC 273 Show, uh, Jones versus Shogun 2. Valentina Shevchenko losing the flyweight championship in the first round via submission to Montana De La Rosa. She's trying to avenge her loss here tonight. The former flyweight queen dominant in that weight class getting dethroned and she is getting her rematch as she probably deserves. And what a card as well. Sanhagen Marais, Miocic Overeem, Poye Jakeshi, and Rory McDonald taking on Jorge Masvidal as well. Glad you guys are here. Thank you for, for watching me, whether you're on YouTube or Twitch. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. Follow me on Twitch so you can catch a live stream whenever I am live. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. The next pay-per-view that we are going to have will be UFC 279, Gillespie versus Fajeda. Three title fights on that pay-per-view card, including an interim featherweight championship fight for the women. The flyweight title between Vago Tinoff and Benavidez. And then the lightweight title is on the line as Gregor Gillespie defends against Carlos Diego Fajeda. Let's go ahead and get right into this. It's pay-per-view time. It's pay-per-view time as I'm uh, live streaming this. It's pay-per-view time tonight. Or no, it's not pay-per-view time tonight. It's fight night. Whatever. Pay-per-view next Saturday. Let's get into it. Taking place in Texas. Streaming it on 4chan, RBM, uh, you will be expecting a call from Dana White. You are going to be arrested right away, sir. Give me my $60. First prelim of the afternoon, Harissa Terbusio taking on Loma Luke Bumi. Terbusio, all of 4-11, 3-2 in the UFC coming off a win over Calvillo. Luke Boon Me, no Luke Boon You. 6-1 in the UFC. She is on a five-fight winning streak. Having a good time. Number 18 in the strawweight division. She is the underdog in this fight. And with good reason. Loses via submission in round number one to Tiburcio. Tiburcio improves to 15 and 6. And she's proud to have caught Lugumi with such a technique. Tiburcio, very tiny, but making waves in the 115 pound division. Moving on, Cornelia Holm taking on Vanessa Porto in the flyweight division. Porto, 1-3 in the UFC, has not had a very good start. However, she is coming off a win over Ashley Yoder. Cornelia Holm, 1-1 one one in the UFC, coming off a loss to Ariane Lipsky. And Holm gets the win via unanimous decision. That is four losses in the last five fights for Vanessa Porto. Very tough for her. Meanwhile, Holm improves to 8-2. And she's calling out Tiffany Teo. And Calm Ferret, can I have a character in this when you get the chance? Absolutely. After I'm done recording, let me know your your uh, your your real name, and we'll get you squared away. We uh, we're doing a thing here on um, the Twitch streams where if you're in the live chat and you want me to make your character, like in game, we'll make your character, like we'll make your fighter, and then we'll see how you progress, you know, through the time that we're in this save. Hopefully, I'm able to sign some of you guys. I know a couple people have already fought um, in uh, in the Twitch chat, and I, and I think one of them has lost his Iran win already. Moving on, Marina Marosh taking on Juliana Velasquez. Velasquez, 15 and one. She is coming off that loss to Jillian Robertson. On the other side, Marina Marosh, number nine in the division, coming off a loss to Mackenzie Dern. But before that, one, two, three, four, five, six fight winning streak for her so she's still on the tear and uh, she's facing off against Velasquez and she's a big underdog but the underdog gets the win Marosh beating on Velasquez Velasquez formerly undefeated now two straight losses as Marosh wins via unanimous decision and she's calling out Shevchenko okay she says hey whether you win or lose in that main event Shevchenko I'm coming after you 
Interesting. We'll have to see what happens there. Moving on, Marina Maknatkina taking on Yana Foxy Kunitskaya in the Bantamweight division. Kunitskaya, number 10 in the Bantamweight division, coming off a loss to Irina Aldana. Maknatkina is coming off two straight wins. Carol Hosa, Sarah Morris. And she's a big favorite too. And she wins. She beats Kunitskaya via unanimous decision. So Maknatkina making her way up in the Bantamweight division. Alrighty. Next, Gavin Hughes taking on Alexander Hernandez. Alexander Hernandez, as I'm uh, recording this, is actually fighting tonight on the Rosenstrike uh, Dawn fight card. Gavin Hughes has had quite the impression here in the UFC. Number 25 in the division, coming off wins over Anthony Pettis and Jim Miller. Meanwhile, Anthony Hernandez. Coming off a loss to Abdurrahmanov, before that beat Joe Lozon, and before that, a three-fight losing streak. Not the best time for him. He is still ranked at number 21. And Gavin Hughes with a big TKO victory in round number one over Alexander the Great. So he is a big prospect to look out for. That is now five straight wins for him in the UFC. Moving on, Derek the Black Beast Lewis, who we just saw knock out Curtis Blaze last weekend, takes on Zumana Alcatraz Cisse in his second UFC fight. He's coming off a win over Augusto Sakai. And then Black Beast has not had a good time in this save. You can see there are four straight losses. And Ganu, Tuivasa, Cyril Gan, Roy Nelson. All pretty tough fights. But we'll see what happens here. He is the favorite against Cisse, and he does win. He knocks out Cisse in round number one. So the Black Beast back in the winning column. Moving on, the Olympian Mark Madsen takes on Otman Azaitar. This guy got cut from the UFC because he tried to sneak a bag into Fight Island. And they just announced recently that he's going to get signed again. I don't know if that's a good move. It doesn't... It really, it really doesn't set the, uh, it really doesn't set the right precedent, you know. Uh, but anyways, Madsen is a huge favorite in this fight, coming off a loss to Jay Herbert. On the other end, you have a Zaitar coming off two straight losses. He could be on the chopping block here if he loses today. And he is a huge underdog, and Madsen gets the TKO victory. And we are going to be saying goodbye to Otman Azaitar. Three straight losses, not ranked. We'll see how you do in the regional circuit, and we'll see if he can bring you back later. And Madsen gets the win here today. All right, Andrea KGB Lee taking on Valerie Lareda. Lareda, very popular uh, right now. She's a Bellator fighter, and she's very marketable, we'll say popular for obvious reasons. Andrea KGB Lee, my friend Jacob, is absolutely obsessed with her. She likes the whole Wisconsin vibe she has going on, he says. Lareda, 2-0 in the UFC, win over Vivian Araujo in her last fight. KGB Lee is 13-5, number 5 in the flyweight division, coming off a loss to Juliana Velasquez. Before that, two straight wins. And Lareda is the favorite here, so... I don't know, we'll see. Valerie Lareda, round number three, knocks out Andrea KGB Lee. I'd imagine that pushes Lareda maybe into the top 12, top 11 kind of situation. She's still fairly young and still very new to the UFC. So I don't know if I wanna push her that quickly, but I mean, that's a pretty big win over a top 10 opponent. Very good for her. Up next in the Bantamweight division, Yuri Alcantara, who is coming off a win over Tim Elliott, faces off against Luca Eovine, who is 3-0 in the UFC, wins over Evloev, Silva de Andrade, and Marlon Vera. He's had a pretty good UFC career thus far. 34 years of age, not getting younger, neither is Alcantara, and Eovine knocks out Alcantara with one second left in round number one, kind of uh, like... Uh, Cody Garbrandt when he knocked out Rafael Asuncao. That was a that was a very crazy knockout, but Ayavine does the exact same thing. And he gives respect to Alcantara. Moving on into the heavyweight division, Augusto Sakai taking on Blagoy Ivanov. 
remember Ivanov, he has some kind of hole in his chest. Uh, when he fought Derek Lewis, Derek Lewis says he was trying to punch the booty hole that was in his chest. Uh, he's coming off four straight losses. He's not having a good time right now. Augusto Sakai, still a young man, 30 years of age. He's coming off a loss to Zamana C. Say. Before that, a two-fight winning streak. And Sakai knocks out Ivanov in round number two. Very soon into round number two, 14 seconds into it. So a much needed win for him. And now Ivanov is on five straight losses. Eek. If Ivanov isn't ranked, we might be letting him go. Five straight losses. That's just not cutting it. All right. It is now pay-per-view time. Everyone give me your $60. It is time for Corey Sanhagen as he takes on Magic Marlon Marais. Now, in real life, of course, Marlon Marais got absolutely destroyed by Corey Sanhagen. And I think they've met in this save as well. Yeah. So Marais actually beat Sanhagen via TKO uh, back in May of 2020. And that would basically be about two years ago. Uh, since then, he beat Cejudo for the title, lost the title to Jan, and then beat TJ Dillashaw. On the other side, you have Corey Sanhagen coming off a win over John Dodson. Before that, uh, before that, uh, lost to Yadon Song, beat Dominic Cruz, beat Rafael Asuncao, and as you can see, lost to Marlon Marais. Uh, why does Ivanov have a hole in his chest? I honestly don't know. That's, um... You guys are the ones that are, are not streaming right now. Uh, I would suggest Googling that and let me know down in the chat because I honestly don't know. All I know is that uh, Derek Lewis said he wanted uh, to punch the booty hole in his chest. And Corey Sanhagen is the favorite in this fight. And Corey Sanhagen does get the victory via ankle lock in round number one. So that could be a potential rematch for a trilogy fight of some sort down the line, but Corey Sanhagen gets a big win over Marlon Marais. And what was Marais ranked at? He was ranked at number two. Wow. Okay, so Sanhagen is probably gonna move way up in the rankings, I'd imagine. And maybe puts him in line for a title shot of some sort. We shall see. And he's happy he was able to get a submission. Moving on in the heavyweight division, Stipe Miocic taking on Alistair Overeem. Now Overeem, number 10 in the division, coming off a win over Yair Rosenstrike. Before that, he lost to Junior Dos Santos. This is only his third fight in the save overall. Interesting. And Miocic coming off a win over Todd Duffy on the Gillespie versus Poye fight card. Before that, lost to Curtis Blades, and then lost to Daniel Cormier for the title. What the hell is this song? It sounds like a remix of a cat coughing up a hairball. <laughs> That's a good point. Nonetheless, as we continue with the cat throwing up a hairball song, Miocic, a big favorite over Alistair Overeem. Overeem said he's close to retiring, but he knocks out Miocic. Alistair Overeem knocks out Stipe in round number one. Stipe didn't have a fight team. That may have had something to do with it. Wow. Overeem getting it done. He's probably going to move up the rankings as well. Moving on now in the lightweight division. Dustin the Diamond Poirier taking on Mark Jakeshi. Jakeshi is 19 and 4. Number 4 in the lightweight division. Coming off a win over Jeremy Kennedy. Before that, lost to Carlos Diego Fajeda. No idea why he's ranked so highly. I mean, he beat Jeremy Kennedy, but... Gaethje, Makachev. Yeah, no real reason why he's so high up. Um, nonetheless, taking on Dustin the Diamond Poirier. Coming off that loss to Gillespie in a title fight. Before that, beat Moicano, beat Jeremy Stevens, beat Brian Ortega. And Jakeshi's a favorite in this song, actually, in this song. He's a favorite in this uh, fight for some reason. Uh, it kind of makes me think he might win. And he does. He knocks out Dustin Poirier in round number one. Wow. That's tough for Dustin. But Jakeshi getting a big knockout win over a veteran of the octagon. And he says his punching power is one of his main weapons. 
I mean, damn. That's tough for Dustin. Uh, I, I, I just watched uh, Dustin. He was on the Joe Rogan podcast. And uh, it was nice being able to you know, watch him and listen to him talk about you know, his life and everything that he's doing in the MMA. And he wants the Connor trilogy, and I think it's going to be pretty cool. The only thing is, I want the fight to be for the title because Dustin deserves it, but Connor doesn't. But then, does it really need to make sense? Because Dustin deserves to fight for the title, but then if Connor were to beat Dustin, then you would be able to technically say, well, he deserves to be champion since he beat him. You know, so a lot of arguments to be made. Co-main event of the evening, Rory Red King McDonald taking on Jorge Game Red Masvidal. Masvidal is on a tear. Ben Askren, Robbie Lawler, and George St. Pierre. Those are the names that he has beaten recently. And this is a title eliminator with Rory McDonald. Rory is coming off a win over Tim Means. Before that, loss to Colby Covington. But, I mean, before that, Wonderboy Thompson, Gilbert Burns, and then he was in PFL for the rest of that time. The winner of this fight will be fighting for the welterweight championship. I feel like Masvidal is going to pull it off. And your winner is Jorge Gamebred Masvidal. He is fighting for the title again as he knocks out Rory McDonald in round number one. And there it is. He is calling out Vicente Luque. He wants that welterweight title. And I think Luque is a, a little bit better of a matchup for him than Usman. So that should be interesting as we approach our main event of the evening for the flyweight championship of the world. Valentina the Bullet Shevchenko fighting Montana De La Rosa trying to avenge her loss and get back her flyweight title. Let's take a look at Shevchenko. Since the beginning of the save, she defended against Calderwood, Chukagian, Jillian Robertson, Muller, Molly McCann, and then ultimately lost it to De La Rosa. And De La Rosa uh, beat Jennifer Maya, lost to Robertson, beat Porto, Chukagian, Macy Barber, and then beat Shevchenko for the title. It is your main event of the evening. The flyweight title is on the line. Let's get it going. Your referee is Steve Mazzagatti. De La Rosa fighting in front of her home state in Texas. Oh, oh, a big strike already. Oh, man. Oh, man. Shevchenko. Oh, man. Nearly ending the fight quickly. Takedown unsuccessful. De La Rosa goes for a takedown and she gets it. Oh man. Is she gonna Is she gonna try to submit Shevchenko again? Oh. As Shevchenko gives up her back, round one ends. And immediately another takedown from De La Rosa. Wow. Knee strike to the ribs for De La Rosa. Arm bar. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Steve Mazzagatti calls us up to this contest at 2 minutes, 23 seconds of round number 2. Declaring the winner by submission due to an arm bar. And still, the undisputed UFC flyweight champion of the world, Montana De La Rosa. That's crazy. Round two submission for De La Rosa, retaining her title. Shevchenko now has to figure out what she's doing because as long as De La Rosa's champion, she can't fight for the title. 29,000 in attendance in Texas, $22 million made on pay-per-view. You love to see it. Yeah, we'll get fight of the night to the main event. And then performance bonus, Overeem, first round knockout.
and Derek Lewis first round knockout, and Iovine for the last second knockout as well. $28 million in profit. As always, we're going to update our rankings, take a look at our emails, and I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to increase the uh, performance bonuses to $50,000 finally. Uh, we've kept it at $25,000 for a while because at the beginning of the save, we, we were like bleeding money. But now that we're super profitable, we can afford to give out some more money to these fighters. And the performance bonuses being bigger might, you know, incentivize them to go after finishes and have amazing fights, you know? We shall see. I wonder if that actually does have any kind of impact. Like if having larger bonuses actually didn't get any of that profit from me. RBM saying uh, he's going to jail soon. That's basically what I'm hearing him saying. Everyone's buying the pay-per-view next weekend, right? I know I am, because I'm a good citizen and I buy pay-per-views. I can't wait for next weekend, though. Adesanya Blahovich. Nunez Anderson. I mean, it's a title fight. It seems kind of obvious that Nunez is going to win, but seeing her fight's always nice. And then the Bantamweight title fight, Jan and Sterling. Now I have a VPN. Don't worry, I bought your pay-per-view. Thank you, Ferret. Thank you very much. See, a good citizen. We need more we need more good people like you here, unlike the scoundrels like RBM. Gus Oliver wants to get added into the game. Absolutely. We'll take care of that after I finish recording right now. Um, Steven Seiler. Ah. Maybe not. Let's go ahead and update our rankings, see what's popping. Overy moves to number four. Miocic is down to number 14. Uh, Lewis is up to number 18. Sakai is ranked once again. Nothing at light heavyweight or middleweight. At welterweight, Masvidal still there at number two. And you know who's waiting for him? Vicente Luque. 41 days away until Masvidal and Luque can fight for the title. And look at this. Because Rory lost in that Masvidal fight, can he fight at 165? No, he can't. Uh, what about Alves? He beat Ponzinibbio. Can he fight at 165? He can. Okay. Usman. Usman can as well. Okay. Good to know. Put me in the same weight class as RBM. You're taking everything I work for. Nice. I love to see the hostility in the chat. At lightweight, uh, Poirier moves down to number 12, and Jakeshi is still there at number 4. Um, so for the lightweight title scene, I've already decided that it's going to be Fajeda and then Ferguson that fight for the title. I kind of just already decided that. Um, as far as Jakeshi, he will now be in the tournament as long as he can fight at 165, which he can. He's going to fight in the super lightweight tournament, and I'm excited for that. I think it's going to be very fun to see different kinds of matchups. Uh, Gavin Hughes moves up to number 17. Very nice. Pull you down to 12. Magomedov now ranked. Uh, nothing at featherweight. At bantamweight, Marais moves all the way down to 8. And Sanhagen is now number 5. Hmm. I feel like a win like that is kind of deserving of a title shot. Because who else is there? Nathaniel Wood? Beat Yadong Song? Okay. Uh, what, what do we have? What do we have here for Bantamweight? Uh, Borg? Okay, actually, this is all This is all very... I'll take care of that in a second, but... I, I need to get everything in, a, in, a, in order as far as my contenders and whatnot. But Marais moves down. Sanhagen moves up. Flyweight, nothing doing. At Bantamweight, Maknat Kina moves up to number 17, literally just one spot. Kunitskaya moves down one spot. At Flyweight, Shevchenko's all the way down to number 9. And everyone else moves up. Valerie Lareda is number 6. 
Wow. After beating KGB Lee, who moves down to number 10. Marosh is number 8. Uh, Shandy Aguda. This is a regen. I love, I love it when regens start to come up because then we get to use them, you know? And it's very interesting because, like, they're not a real person, you know? But it's interesting because look at this. 7-0 in Invicta. Like, hell yeah, let's bring her up. She's already low-level national popularity. Let's see what she's got, you know? Velasquez moved down to 13. Holm is ranked at 23. And Reina Cordova in at number 25. And at strawweight, Tiburcio moves up 13. Boot Boonmi moves down to 23. Let's take a look at the emails. Masvidal needs to be renewed. You already know we're going to renew him. Yes, sir. Sanhagen, we're going to be renewing him as well. Uh, LFA approached Masvidal. Uh, MNC Vision needs to re-sign with them. We'll do that real quickly. Alrighty. And so that looks like it's going to do it for this pay-per-view. The next pay-per-view is UFC 279 Gillespie versus Fajeda. The next time that I see you guys will be for UFC Fight Night Jotko versus Antonio Carlos Jr. You can take a look at the fight cards there. We also got UFC Fight Night Rousey versus Kaufman and UFC Fight Night Shogun versus Nemkov. Thank you guys for joining me for this pay-per-view. Uh, if you're watching on Twitch, stay tuned. Got a lot more going on. Got the, the booking stream and all that going on. So have a good one.